yeah, this is kind of how I get around at the moment. It's not great. If you follow this channel, then you potentially notice that I uploaded a great finale to a long project and then kind of disappeared. I know that my upload schedule isn't exactly precise, but I actually had some cool things in the pipeline. Plans for things to share shortly after completing Beam Off to Brand. Sadly, none of that has come to pass. I mean, you've read the title of the video. You know where this is going. On October 4th, 2022, a totally regular and normal day like any other, I got on a rental electric bike to head to my ceramic studio and I, um, I never made it there. As I was cycling through Burgess Park in South London, I had a collision with another cyclist and I haven't been able to walk since. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, um, this isn't really a very happy story. Part of the reason why I'm only just now sharing this with all of you is because it's been a really difficult experience to swallow. I think it's easy to downplay this kind of life experience as something that just happens and you recover and move on. But in reality, it's a lot more than that. It's taken me a while to get to a point where I am both physically and mentally recovered enough to actually talk about it. But yeah, I guess you could say that this is where I've been the last several weeks. The accident itself was jarring, partly because it was almost strangely banal. I wasn't going that fast, the, the collision wasn't particularly dramatic, and I didn't feel like I hit the ground that hard. For those of you interested in the particulars, the woman that collided with me was slightly in front of me and to my right and veered to turn left, kind of cutting off my path. We crashed into each other and we both fell. She and her also electric bike falling on top of me and my bike. Honestly, the worst part about the collision itself was the fact that she kind of lost her mind at me about it. I sat on the ground dazed and in shock while she screamed vile, unnecessarily gendered slurs at me, blaming me for the fact that we collided before eventually getting back on her bike and riding away. Yeah. You heard me right. She got back on her bike and rode away. The irony of this isn't lost on me. Honestly though, I thought I would too. I thought I would get up, brush myself off and be on my way, albeit a bit more shaken and bruised than before. It was only when I went to stand and felt the first sickening tidal wave of pain hit me that I knew something was very wrong. Unfortunately, this was only the beginning of my nightmare, as I would end up spending 12 excruciating hours in A&E before actually learning the extent of my injuries. There is going to be some more intense medical stuff now, so skip this part if you don't want to hear details or see x-ray images or graphics. It turned out that I had what was known as a Schatzker grade 5 break to my tibial plateau, the part of your tibia where it meets the knee. For those of you curious, there are only six grades, so I had basically one of the worst. I don't have my exact x-rays to show you, but what I can recall when they were shown to me at two in the morning was a number of spidering cracks all over my tibia. It very much seemed like my knee had been utterly obliterated, a sentiment that seemed to be backed up by the urgency in the doctor's voice when he told me that I needed surgery to fix my leg and I wouldn't be leaving the hospital until that happened. I was told, as I was getting my entire left leg hastily wrapped in a temporary plaster cast, that the best chance I had for a full recovery was to have multiple metal plates attached to my bone to stabilize and rebuild the deformed plateau. The surgery would be complex and require an extremely experienced and adept surgeon to pull it off. This isn't exactly what you want to hear when you're lying in a triage bed in agonizing pain and all you want to do is go home. It all sounded pretty terrifying, but it was also my best chance of actually being able to walk again. And I really, really wanted to be able to walk again. <laughs> I wish I could tell you at this point that is horrible as the accident was that everything was smooth sailing from here on out. Unfortunately, as wonderful as the NHS can be, it is also struggling immensely, which for me manifested itself in things like being placed in an elderly ward due to a lack of beds 
extreme delays to my urgently needed surgery, and a range of difficulties around getting the medication I needed. In the end, I waited over a week for my surgery, mostly bedbound and with little idea of when I might get to finally go home. Those days were incredibly difficult. There were very much times when it felt never ending, when it felt like I might never see my home again. I don't want to make it sound like I went through the worst ordeal that anyone has ever been through or like my experience is somehow special and I deserve special treatment. I can only really speak of what I went through and those days were exceedingly challenging. I still struggle to think back on them now. My heart goes out to everyone who has suffered through this kind of experience and beyond. In many ways, I know I am very lucky. As hard as all of this was, it is really difficult to imagine all of the ways in which it could have been worse. There was good news in all of this struggle, thankfully. I suffered little to no soft tissue injury, making the surgery easier to perform and giving me a much better long-term prognosis. The operation went extremely well, and in less than 72 hours, I went from being unable to move my leg at all to being able to bend my knee again, a thing that to me still feels <laughs> quite miraculous to think about. Science is pretty amazing. After 12 never-ending days in hospital, I was finally able to go home and continue my recovery there. As difficult as my time in hospital was, I cannot thank the team of nurses in charge of my care enough for all that they did for me. They really are truly incredible humans, and I am already hard at work on my thank you project for them. It's definitely not as much as they deserve, but making is my love language. So you can expect to see what I come up with for them in the near future. So far, recovery has been a weird and boring adventure. If you've ever broken a bone, especially a leg bone, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. But as many of you already know about me, I am both very stubborn and an overachiever, which means I have thrown myself into physical therapy with complete gusto, and I am well on my way to being back on my own two feet. When will I walk again? Well, with a bit of luck. When I go back to the hospital on November 24th, my scans will come back showing a fully healed bone, and I will be given the go-ahead to put weight on my left leg again. I share more frequent updates on my recovery on social media and Patreon, so make sure you're following if you want to hear about how the appointment goes. Hopefully there will be another video in the near future with me walking again unaided. Keep your fingers crossed for me. This whole experience isn't exactly one I would recommend. That said, it has been made considerably better by the outpouring of love and support I've received from y'all. There have been a lot of difficult emotions and dark moments in this for me. And knowing that there are so many of you out there cheering me on has helped more than I can say. A huge thank you as well to everyone who has helped me financially through Patreon and Ko-fi as you have in a very real way helped to keep things afloat during an already difficult time. I have missed my community and my work dearly and I really appreciate all of the patience while I get back to some semblance of normal. I will be back again, better than you remember, and hopefully sooner than you think.